if a force of 200 newton acts on a body the change in momentum is 100 kg meters per second what is the time for which the force acts on the body the four options are 1 second 0.75 seconds 0.5 second and 0.25 seconds according to newton's second law force is equal to rate of change of momentum so which is nothing but mv minus mu upon t so the change of momentum is given as 100 kg meter per second so the time for which it would act is 100 upon 200 newtons so that is 0.5 hence option c is the correct answer a force acts on a body of mass 50 kg for 10 seconds when the force stops acting on the body the body covers 80 meters in the next 10 seconds what is the magnitude of force the options given are 40 newtons 50 newtons 30 newtons and 60 newtons so when the force stops acting on the body the body moves with a constant uniform velocity hence velocity is distance which it travels that is 80 meters for the next 10 seconds so it travels with a speed of 8 meters per second now since the assuming that the body starts initially from rest u we would get zero and it finally it attains a speed of 8 meters per second for in time 10 seconds when that is when the force is acting on the body so let us find out the acceleration using the kinematic equation v is equal to u plus a times t therefore 8 is equals to 0 plus a times 10 therefore the value of a we get as 0.8 meters per second square so the force is nothing but mass times acceleration which is equals to force is 50 mass into acceleration is 0.8 which is nothing but 40 newton hence option a is the correct answer a body of mass 5 kg is moving with a velocity of 20 meters per second if a force of 100 newtons is applied on it for 10 seconds in the same direction as its velocity what will be the velocity of the body the four options are 180 meters per second 200 meters per second 220 meters per second and 250 meters per second let's assume a body which is moving with an initial velocity given as 20 meters per second after some time a force of 100 newtons is applied for a duration of 10 seconds so since it is in the same direction there will be a change in the acceleration so let's find out the acceleration caused due to the 100 newton force so acceleration is given by force per unit mass that is 100 divided by 5 kg so 20 meters per second square this is acceleration so the final velocity would be given by kinematic equation v is equal to u plus at here v is the final velocity that we require u is taken as the velocity 20 plus 20 meters per second square and since it acts for a 10 seconds duration so 10 so that is 220 meters per second this option c hence option c is the correct answer a player caught a cricket ball of mass 150 g moving at a rate of 20 meters per second the catching process is completed in 0.1 seconds what is the force exerted by the ball on the hand of the player the options given are 15 newtons 20 newtons 30 newtons and 40 newtons now impulse is nothing but change in momentum change in momentum that is also given by f into t which can be written as m v minus 0 since the final velocity here is 0 therefore force into time that is 0.1 seconds is equals to 150 into 10 raised to 150 into 10 raised to minus 3 converted into kgs and 20 minus 0 therefore the force is equals to 150 tend to minus 3 into 20 upon 
we get this as 30 newtons hence option c is the correct answer a railway engine mass 10 raised to 4 kg is moving with a speed of 72 kilometers per hour the force which should be applied to bring it to a rest over a distance of 20 meter is uh, in order to solve this let's look at the inertial velocity which is 72 kilometers per hour converting into meters per second by multiplying with 5 by 18 we get it as 20 meters per second and since it has to be brought to a rest final velocity would be 0 so using the kinematic equation v square equals u square plus 2 a s we will find out the retardation a so a can be written as v square which is 0 minus u square that is 20 square upon 2 s s is given as 20 meters so a is equals to minus 10 meters per second square the negative sign here shows that it is a retarding force so the force that has to be applied is mass times acceleration it is 10 raised to 4 into 10 is 10 raised to 5 newtons so 10 raised to 5 newtons hence option d is the correct answer if suddenly the gravitational force of attraction between the earth and a satellite revolving around it becomes zero the satellite will the four options given are continue to move in its orbit with the same velocity move tangentially to the original orbit with the same velocity become stationary in its orbit move towards the earth now when we look at a satellite which is orbiting the earth since the satellite is orbiting the earth it is basically acted upon two velocities the tangential velocity and the gravitational pull now when the gravitational pull becomes zero the only velocity left would be the tangential velocity which initially was causing the circular motion but since there is no pull the tangential velocity alone would take it in a tangential direction with the same velocity previously hence option b is the correct answer a ball of mass 150 gram moving with an acceleration of 20 meters per second square is hit by a force which acts on it for 0.1 seconds what is the impulsive force the options given are 0.1 newtons 0.5 newton 0.3 newton and 1.2 newtons for the formula for impulse j is given as force into time and force can be written as mass into acceleration so j is mass into acceleration times time so substituting these values 150 into 10 raised to minus 3 20 meters per second square for a duration of 0 0.1 seconds this answer turns out to be 0 0.3 newtons hence option c is the correct answer a ball of weight 0 0.1 kg moving with a speed of 30 meters per second strikes a bat and returns in the opposite direction with a speed of 40 meters per second then the impulse is in order to solve this sum we need to know that impulse is nothing but change in momentum so change in momentum is given by mv minus m u but here since the direction is changed in the opposite direction u would be written as minus u so mv minus m times minus u so substituting the values we get impulse equals 0 0.1 into 40 minus 0 0.1 into minus 30 hence option b is the correct answer a constant force acts on a body of mass 5 kg at rest for 10 seconds if the body moves through a distance of 250 meters what is the magnitude of force the options given are 15 newtons 25 newtons 30 newtons and 40 newtons in order to find out the force which is nothing but mass times acceleration first we need to find out the value of acceleration 
For finding acceleration, let us use the kinematic equation S is equals to ut plus half at square. The S that is the displacement is given as 250 meters. Since the body is at rest, u is equals to 0 plus half a t is given as 10 seconds. So t square would be 100. So the value of a comes out to be 5 meters per second square. So in order to find out force, F is nothing but mass which is 5 kg into 5 meters per second square that is 25 newtons hence option B is the correct answer. The momentum of a body is numerically equal to its kinetic energy. What is the velocity of the body in meters per second? The options given are 2 meters per second, 3 meters per second, 4 meters per second and 1 meter per second. It is given that momentum equals kinetic energy. Uh, the momentum is given by m into v as kinetic energy is half m v square. So v equals to 2 meters per second. Hence option A is the correct answer. A stone is dropped from a height h. It hits the ground with a certain momentum p. If the same stone is dropped from a height 100% more than the previous height, the momentum when it hits the ground will change by the options given are 68%, 41%, 200% and 100%. So now when the stone is hit on the ground from a height h, it has a certain momentum which is mass into velocity and the velocity is given by root 2 gh. So the initial momentum m root 2 gh. Let's say this is the first case. Now in the second case, when it is dropped from a height 100% more, which is basically nothing but twice the initial height. So the new momentum would be m root of 2g. Now h would be replaced by 2h. So which is nothing but mass into root 2 root 2gh. Now m root 2 gh can be written as p1. So p2 equals root 2 times p1. So it has an extra root 2 factor in it. Now percentage change can be given by p2 minus p1 upon p1 into 100 which is root 2 times p1 minus p1 upon p1 root 2 minus 1 into 100 root 2 is 1.41 minus 1 into 100 which makes 41 percent hence option b is the correct answer the equation of motion of a particle of mass m is given by y is equal to ut plus half gt square what is the force acting on the particle the options given are mg root mg 2 times mg and mg raised to 3 by 2. Now the equation of motion is given by y is equal to ut plus half gt square. So the velocity is nothing but dy by dt that is derivative of the motion with respect to time. So which turns out to be v u plus gt. Acceleration is nothing but time derivative of velocity. So taking the derivative of this again, we get it as g. Therefore, the acceleration is nothing but g. That is the acceleration due to gravity. Now the force is mass into acceleration. It is mg. Hence, option A is the correct answer. A 10 kg stone is suspended by a rope of breaking strength 30 kg weight. What is the minimum time in which the stone can be raised through a height of 10 meters if the stone is at rest? The value of g is given as 10 meters per second square. The four options are 1 second, 2 seconds, 2 root of 2 by 3 seconds and 0 0.5 seconds. Now, let's say this is a rope and it has a tension when the stone is suspended on it. Now this stone is pulled in the downward direction by its weight mg and when it has to be pulled upwards a force ma is acting on it. So 
the tension T and the acceleration force due to acceleration is balanced by MA. Therefore, this is the limiting condition so that this rope does not break. Hence, 300 minus mg that is 10 to 10 is equals to ma that is 10 into a. Therefore, the value of acceleration is 20 meters per second square. Now, since the stone initially is at rest, so using the kinematic equation s is equal to half a t square, we get s that is 10 meters is equals to half into a that is 20 meters per second square and time t square therefore t square is 1 hence t is equals to 1 second option a is the correct answer a monkey is descending from the branch of a tree with a constant acceleration. If the breaking strength of the branch is 75% of the weight of the monkey, then the minimum acceleration with which the monkey can slide down without breaking the branch is 4 options are g, g by 2, g by 4 and 3 g by 4. Now let's assume this is a branch. The monkey is, has a force of mg which is due to gravity the tension t is in the branch and since the monkey is sliding down with an acceleration a the tension force t is balanced by mg self weight of the monkey plus the acceleration force that is ma therefore t minus mg is equals to ma here the tension in the branch is given as 75 percent of the weight which is nothing but 3 by 4 3 4 the weight of the monkey so 3 by 4 m minus mg equals ma so can taking m common 3 by 4 minus g is equals to ma therefore a is given by 3 by 4 g pardon me a is given by g minus 3 by 4 times g which is nothing but g by 4 hence option c is the correct answer a jet of water issuing horizontally from a hose pipe with velocity of 2 meters per second strikes a vertical wall what is the force exerted by the jet on the wall if the area of mouth of the hose pipe is 5 cm square and the density of water is 10 raised to 3 kg per meter square? Now, the options given are 1.5 newtons, 2 newtons, 2.5 newtons, and 3 newtons. So, let's find out the volume of water which comes out of the pipe. See, volume is given by area of the pipe into the velocity with which the water is ejecting. So area of the pipe is given as 5 cm square which can be converted into meters as 5 into 10 raise to minus 4 meters square and it comes out with a velocity of 2 meters per second. So the volume is 10 raise to minus 3 meters cube. The mass of the water which comes out for a volume of 10 raise to minus 3 meter cube can is given by volume times density so 10 raise to minus 3 into 10 raise to 3 which is nothing but 1 kg per second so 1 kg per second is the mass of water which comes out now force is nothing but rate of change of momentum that is mass into velocity divided by the time so 1 kg per second so this is time covered into velocities 2 meters per second so that is 2 newtons hence option b is the correct answer a horizontal force f bar acts on a block of mass m kept on a smooth inclined plane of inclination theta as shown in the figure what is the normal reaction n on the block the options given are mg cos theta minus f sin theta 
एम जी साइन थीटा माइनस एफ कॉस थीटा एम जी साइन थीटा प्लस एफ कॉस थीटा एंड एम जी कॉस थीटा प्लस एफ साइन थीटा लेट एस ड्रॉ द फिगर अगेन नाउ दोर्सेज दैट एक्ट ऑन दिस बॉडी आर द सेल्फ वेट एम जी एंड दोर्स एफ दैट इज गिवेन लेट एस कंसिडर दीज टू बी दाई कॉर्डिनेट्स so mg the force mg can be resolved into two perpendicular components as mg cos theta since this angle is theta therefore this is theta and mg sin theta the force f bar can also be resolved into two components f this is angle theta therefore f sin theta and f cos theta now the normal reaction n n is balanced by two forces mg cos theta and f sin theta so n is equal to mg cos theta minus f pardon me plus f sin theta so which is nothing but option d hence option d is the correct answer two balls of the same mass are dropped from the same height on the floor the first ball bounces elastic elastically from the floor while the second one sticks to the floor if i1 and i2 are the impulses applied by first and second ball respectively to the floor then the relation between i1 and i2 is the four options given are i1 equals i2 i1 is equal to i2 by 2 I one is equal to two times I two and I one is equal to I two by four. Now impulse is nothing but change in momentum. That is mass into change in velocity. So in the first case, since the ball drops and again rebounds with the same velocity therefore m v minus m into minus v since it bounces in the opposite direction with the same speed therefore the value of v would be only having a negative sign so m v plus m v that is 2 times m v this is i1 in the second case i2 the ball drops and sticks to the floor so the final velocity is zero so mass into v minus zero so the impulse i2 is mv as you can see i1 is equal to 2 times i2 hence option c is the correct answer a rocket with a lift of mass of 3.4 into 10 raised to 4 kg is blasted upwards with an initial acceleration of 10 meters per second square what is the initial thrust of blast the options given are 14 into 10 raised to 5 newtons 1.75 into 10 raised to 5 newtons 3.5 into 10 raised to 5 newtons and 7 into 10 raised to 5 newtons when an object is thrusted upwards the forces acting on it are the self weight and since it is accelerated with a thrust there is an inertial thrust that is m into a and this is the balanced by the thrust therefore the force or the thrust is given by f in which is equals to mg plus ma so m taken out common comes g plus a let's take g as 10 meters per second square so m into 10 meters per second square plus the acceleration of 10 meters per second square which is m into 20 the mass is given as 3.4 into 10 raised to 4 kg so multiplied it by 20 we get 7 into 10 raised to 5 approximately 7 into 10 raised to 
newtons hence option d is the correct answer a 600 kg rocket is set for vertical firing if the exhaust speed is 1000 meters per second the mass of gas ejected per second to supply the thrust needed to overcome the weight of the rocket is the options given are 58.6 kg per second 76.4 kg per second 6 kg per second and 117 kg per second now for a rocket the thrust or force is given by minus u dm by dt now this term dm by dt is nothing but the mass of the rocket along with the fuel in it which keeps on decreasing as the rocket keeps moving in the upward direction so as the rocket is moving the fuel is getting exhausted which means the total mass of the object is basically decreasing and hence the negative sign but f is balanced by mg therefore mg equals minus u times dm by dt therefore we can write this as dm by dt is equals to mg by u which is nothing but let's put it in a mod so mg m is given as 600 kg into g as 10 and 1000 meters per second which is the velocity of the gas so which is 6 so the rate of change of mass or basically the mass of the fuel or the thrust which comes out of the rocket is 6 kg per second hence option c is the correct answer a divari rocket is ejecting 5 grams of gases per second at a velocity of 4 meters per second what is the accelerating force acting on the rocket the options given are 0.02 newtons 0.5 newtons 0.08 newtons and 0.1 newton the accelerating force or the thrust is given as u to dm by dt that is the change rate of change of mass of the rocket so this can be written as 4 meters per second into the rate at which gases are being ejected which is nothing but 5 grams per second 5 into 10 to the minus 3 kg per second that is 20 into 10 to the minus 2 minus 3 newtons which is nothing but 0.02 newtons so hence option a is the correct answer a thief stole a box of valuable gold articles of weight w and jumped down a wall of height h before he reached the ground he experienced a load of the options given are 2w w w by 2 and 0 now when a thief jump down a wall and his in mid air before he reaches the ground now since he is in mid air with the box in his hand the forces acting on the man are mg and force acting on the box is also weight into g but the acceleration is constant in both the cases and hence both are pulled towards the ground with the same force hence the force uh, that the thief experiences zero hence option d is the correct answer a boy stands on a weighing machine inside a lift when the lift is going down with acceleration of g by 4 the machine shows a reading of 30 kg when the lift goes upwards with an acceleration of g by 4 the reading would be the options given are 18 kg 37.5 kg 50 kg and 67.5 kg now when any body is going downwards so the forces acting on it are the self weight however there's an inertial force that is m into a acting in the upward direction so the apparent weight uh, would be m times g minus a since the acceleration is given as g by 4 so m into g by 4 g minus g by 4 which is m into 3 by 4 times g and the weight is given or weight that the machine shows is nothing but 30 kg so 
this is equal to 30 kg so 3 by 4 mg is equal to 30 kg so mg which is the true weight of the object is 40 newtons so this is the true weight of the object now when the lift is moving in the upward direction the inertial weight acts in the downward direction along with the self weight of the object so the weight new reading that it would be showing is mg plus ma so m times g plus a that is g by 4 so m into 5 by 4 times g which is 5 by 4 mg is 5 by 4 into 40 which is nothing but 50 newtons hence option c is the correct answer the pulleys and strings shown in the figure are smooth and of negligible mass for the system to remain in equilibrium the angle theta should be the options given are 60 degrees 45 degree 30 degree and 0 degrees as you can see for this mass m and this m these both masses are balanced by a tension t so the force that is acting since the system is in equilibrium these balance these forces should be balanced so the force that is acting in on this body in the downward direction is nothing but the weight of the body so mg which is balanced by the tension in the string t similar is the case for this mass now for the central mass of root 2 m the weight that is acting or the force in the downward direction is m root 2 times mg and this is balanced by the two strings that is t cos theta plus t cos theta which is nothing but equal to root 2 pardon me 2 times t cos theta which is equal to root 2 mg now t cos theta or t can be substituted as mg therefore root 2 mg is equals to 2 times mg cos theta so mg mg gets cancelled and cos theta equals root 2 by 2 so cos theta equals 1 by root 2 which implies theta is equal to 45 degree hence option b is the correct answer a ball of mass 1 kg hangs in equilibrium from two strings oa and bo as shown in the figure what are the tensions in the strings oa and ob take g is equal to 10 meters per second square the options given are 5 newtons and 0 0 and n 5 newtons and 5 root 3 newtons and 5 root 3 newtons and 5 newtons so let us just draw this figure once again so this angle is 30 degree whereas this angle is 60 degrees so naturally since 30 60 this angle has to be 90 degrees of weight of mg that is 1 into 10 which is nothing but 10 newtons acts in the downward direction the tension in the string t1 and tension in the string t2 is along ao and bo now this is 90 degrees here 90 degrees there is some concept known as lamy's theorem which gives a relation for a triangle it says that t1 upon sin theta1 is equal to t2 upon sin theta2 which equals t3 upon sin theta3 the t for t1 the angle theta1 is this total angle for t2 the opposite angle theta2 is this angle and for t3 that is mg the opposite angle here is 90 so t1 
upon sin theta 1 this angle is nothing but 60 plus 90 that is 150 so sin 150 and t2 the opposite angle is 30 plus 90 which is 120 so t2 upon sin 120 is equals to t3 upon sin 90 sin 90 so sin 150 can be written as sin of 180 minus 30 so t1 upon sin 30 is equals to t2 upon sin of 180 minus 60 nothing that is nothing but sin 60 is equals to t3 that is the self weight w divided by sin 90 which is 1 so t1 comes out to be w into sin 30 there is 10 newtons into sin 30 is half so that is 5 newtons and the value of t2 is equals to w into sin 120 sin 60 and sin 60 is root 3 by 2 so 10 into root 3 by 2 that is nothing but 5 root 3 newtons hence option d uh, option c is the correct answer a light string passes over frictionless pulley to one of its ends a mass of 6 kg is attached to its other end a mass of 10 kg is attached as shown in the figure what is the tension in the string the value of g is given as 10 meters per second square options given are 25 newtons 30 newtons 50 newtons and 75 newtons now in this since it is the same string the tension acts equally over the entire string the force or the self weight acting on this block 6 kg is 6 times g and for this weight it's 10 times g so the common acceleration is given by 10 minus 6 upon 10 plus 6 into g the resultant acceleration is 10 minus 6 upon 10 plus 6 which is nothing but g by 4 that is 2.5 meters per second square so the acceleration or the resultant net acceleration that the system experiences is 2.5 meters per second square now let's take a look at the 10 kg block for the 10 kg block the forces acting are self weight which is 10 g and the tension in the string which is t and since the block of 10 kg moves in the downward direction an inertial weight of m times a or that is 10 a would be acting in the upward direction therefore the balancing force is t plus m a equals m g therefore t plus 10 times a equals 10 into g t is equals to 10 g minus 10 a which is 10 into 10 minus 10 into 2.5 which is 100 minus 25 that is nothing but 75 newtons therefore the tension is 75 newtons three bodies a b c each of mass 2 kg are hanging from a string passing over a fixed frictionless pulley as shown in the figure what is the tension in the part of the string connecting the bodies b and c the options given are 5 newtons 13 newtons 8.5 newtons and 19.6 newtons we need to find out a tension in this portion of the string first of all let us find out the total force acting on the entire system so the total force is 2 2 kgs of this and 2 kgs of this into the acceleration minus 2 kgs of this in the other direction so that is 2g so the total force is nothing but 2g now the acceleration in the system 
is force upon mass that is 2g upon mass of the entire system that is 2 plus 2 plus 2 which is 2g upon 6 or that can be written as g upon 3 so the resultant acceleration on the system is g by 3 and g is taken as 10 so the acceleration is 10 by 3 meters per second square now for this body c the upward force of tension t is balanced by the downward force that is mg so the tension t also since the body is moving in the downward direction an inertial acceleration which is equals to m into the acceleration that is 10 by 3 will act in the upward direction therefore T plus MA is equals to MG therefore T plus M that is 2 into 10 by 3 is equals to 2 into 10 therefore value of T turns out to be 13 Newtons hence option B is the correct answer a block of mass M is resting on a smooth horizontal surface one end of a uniform rope of mass m by 3 is fixed to the block. The block is pulled in the horizontal direction by a force f at the other end. What is the tension in the middle of the rope? The options given are 1 by 5 f, 7 by 8 f, 8 by 7 f and 1 by 7 f. Let us draw the figure for the problem. A block of mass m is resting on a horizontal surface. It has a rope that is pulled by force F. The weight of the rope is M by, six, M by 3, but the two halves can be written as M by 6 into M by 6. So the acceleration in the system the acceleration in the system can be given by force divided by the combined mass of the system that is m plus m by 3 the weight of the rope so that can be written as 3f by 4m this is the acceleration of the entire system now at the midpoint the tension would be given by m plus m by 6 this is half weight or the mass of the half of the system multiplied by the acceleration so 7m by 6 times 3f by 4m so what we get is the tension in the string as 7f by 8 hence option b is the correct answer a neutron having a mass of 1.67 into 10 raised to minus 27 kg moving at 10 raised to 8 meters per second collides with the deuteron at rest and sticks to it if the mass of the deuteron is 3.34 into 10 raised to 7 10 raised to minus 27 kg then what is the speed of the combined mass the options given are 0.25 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second 0.5 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second 0.33 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second 0.65 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second in order to solve this sum, we need to apply the principle of linear conservation of linear momentum. Conservation of momentum, which states that momentum before collision is equal to the momentum after collision. So, momentum before collision for each for neutron was m1 u1, for deuteron was m2 u2. And after collision, the, since both stick to each other, the combined mass of m1 into m2 with a uh, combined speed of v. Since u2, that is the deuteron, was initially at rest, this term becomes 0. Therefore, 1.67 into 10 raised to minus 27 and into 10 raised to 8 meters per second 
equals m1 plus m2 times the combined velocity therefore velocity v is equals to 1.67 into 10 raised to minus 27 into 10 raised to 8 upon m1 plus m2 that is 1.67 plus 3.34 into 10 raised to minus 27 which is equals to 10 raised to 8 upon 3 so that can be written as 0 0.33 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second hence option c is the correct answer a balloon with its contents has a mass m it is descending in with an acceleration a where a is less than g what mass of its contents must be removed from it so that it starts moving up with an acceleration a the options given are g plus a by 2 ma 2 ma by g plus a m a upon g plus a and 3 m a upon g plus a now let us consider the first case of the balloon in this the gas inside the balloon causes it to rise up by a force f and the force acting in the downward direction due to the self weight is m times g now since the balloon is moving in the downward direction there is an acceleration inertial acceleration a therefore the force mg is balanced by f plus the inertial acceleration the force due to inertial acceleration that is nothing but ma therefore f is equals to mg minus m a now in the second case let's say a small mass small amount of mass m is subtracted so the self weight would now be m minus m times g and in this second case the gas causes a force of f again in the upward direction but in this second case, since the balloon starts moving in the upward direction, the inertial acceleration would be in the downward direction. Hence, m minus m times a plus m minus m times g is equals to f. Therefore, equating these two equations, we get mg minus m a equals m minus m times a plus m minus m times g therefore solving for the value of small m we get m g minus m a is equals to m a minus small m a plus m g minus m g therefore m a plus m g equals m a plus capital m g minus capital m g plus m a so these two get cancelled m times a plus g is equals to 2 m a therefore the small mass m that needs to be taken out is 2 m a upon a plus g hence option b is the correct answer a jet of water with cross sectional area a is striking against a wall at an angle theta with the horizontal and rebounds elastically what is the normal force acting on the wall if the velocity of water jet is v and the density of water is rho the options given are a v rho cos theta 2 a v rho cos theta 2 a v square rho cos theta and a rho v square cos theta let us draw the figure of exactly what is happening this is the water jet v and rebounces again with a velocity of v this is angle theta so this is v cos theta v cos theta Now, 
the change in velocity delta v is v cos theta minus since the rebouncing on rebouncing the velocity is in the opposite direction so there would be again a minus sign here so the change in velocity along the horizontal direction is 2v cos theta now the force is nothing but rate of change of momentum that is change of momentum per unit time change of momentum is m delta v upon t now the mass of the flowing water is area into the velocity of water into the change in velocity upon time now velo the mass of flowing water can be written as rho a v times delta v since v by t is nothing nothing but rho therefore f can be given as a into v times rho into 2 v cos theta so for the force acting is nothing but 2 rho a v square cos theta this is option c hence option c is the correct answer